Good morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, thir Thursday. Oh boy, Thursday morning devos with the pastor. I uh, want to continue the conversation we were having on Sunday. If you weren't with us, we were talking about Mary and Martha, specifically Martha, the sidekick, that sometimes we undervalue. Jesus never said, don't be a Martha. He said, Martha, you're distracted by many things. A few of you reached out to me and thanked me for giving you permission to be a Martha because you know you're a Martha. Everybody knows you're a Martha. Well, you know what? God bless you. <laughs> Thank God for Marthas um, because uh, the gift of hospitality and serving is beautiful. Uh, but don't be distracted um, in your serving. Keep your focus on Jesus. I want to finish the story about Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus because we, we didn't tell the whole story. If you know that story or you remember Sunday, we talked about Jesus arriving late, um, quote unquote. When he arrives, Lazarus, who had been sick, is now dead. And Martha, followed by Mary, and then the people who were there grieving all said, Jesus, if only you had been here sooner, you could have prevented this. Jesus uh, goes on to do something amazing, something better than heal someone who's sick. He, he brings someone who's dead back to life. And in this story, there's a couple things that jumped off the page, and I thought I would share them with you. They didn't fit, and we didn't have time on Sunday to talk about them, but I thought I'd share them this morning and encourage you, if there's something that that you love about this story, or as we're talking about it, maybe maybe uh, comes to mind, feel free to mention it in the comment section or, or um, to come back later and type something in. I love how the Word of God is active and alive and uh, speaks to us in a fresh way. Um, the first thing that uh, I notice when I read the ending of the story, uh, verse 38 of John chapter 11, Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. This story mentions the compassion of Jesus on several occasions. And the life of Christ and the gospel account reveals compassion on a very powerful level. I'm not sure I fully appreciate and pay enough attention to the compassion of Jesus. It is hard to imitate Jesus sometimes when you read the Bible. Walking on water is tricky. Miracles are difficult. Turning water to wine, uh, yeah, seemingly impossible. But showing compassion is something we can do and something Jesus did frequently. Why did people who were on the margins, people who struggled, people who were poor, who were sick, who were... Um, disadvantage why did they love him so much it's because of his compassion the word compassion is a fascinating word passion meaning suffer the prefix con meaning with in other words compassion literally means to suffer with in our generosity while it's important to financially give especially to situations that we can't actively participate in or physically uh, be at, it's also significant that we are generous with our time, with our, our hands, with our gifts. Because when we go to someone who has a need, when we go and sit with someone who is struggling, we are entering into their life. We are suffering with them. And there's something beautiful and deeply meaningful about that. It's something Jesus did all the time, didn't he? He entered into the lives of people. He suffered with them. In Matthew 25, Jesus tells a parable about the sheep and the goats and how God will separate people like a, a, a farmer, a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. And the sheep are people that fed the hungry, that, that spent time with the lonely, that visited the prisoner. And the other people, the goats, said, hey, what, what's so special about them and what they did? And Jesus said, 
all of those compassionate actions that they did to to their friends, to strangers, to enemies, brothers and sisters, if they did those things to the least of of people, it's like they were doing it to me. It's like they were serving me, feeding me, spending time with me. And when you stop to think about that, if someone's lonely and they're struggling, Jesus is already showing compassion and wanting to enter into their suffering if they'll let him. So when we go to be with that person, we're not only entering into that person's life, we're meeting Jesus in that situation. The second thing that comes to mind is the idea of trust. Jesus says, move the stone, roll it away. And Martha, who's very practical, said, I don't think that's a good idea. He's been dead for four days. It's going to smell. Jesus sometimes asks us to do things that don't make sense, at least not to us. Or even if it makes sense to us, part of the challenge is it won't make sense to the people around us. But it comes down to trust. In Jesus saying, roll the stone away, he's saying, I want you to trust me. I wonder, I wonder how many things I miss out on because I don't trust Jesus when he asks me or invites me to do something. Sometimes I don't feel very strong. I can't move a rock, a boulder, but maybe, maybe I can move a, a small stone or even a pebble. Jesus invites us to have mustard seed size faith. So even moving something small, showing a small sign of trust, starting somewhere, we see amazing things. Jesus says to the people, did I not tell you? If you believed, you would see something amazing. It says you would see the glory of God. Do I miss out on seeing the glory of God because I don't trust Jesus enough to do something that I don't understand? You know, when I, when I read the Bible, or when I'm praying, and if I feel a prompting of the Holy Spirit, or maybe maybe you've received a word from the Lord. We, we need to always um, speak with other mature Christians to make sure we fully understand and if something doesn't make sense. But when we come to appreciate what we're being asked to do, it's just really difficult. Jesus is saying, trust me. And so we have the opportunity through obedience to trust him and to be part of something incredible, to see a miracle, to maybe even participate in a miracle and see the glory of God revealed. The final thing, um, among many, but the final thing that I want to mention here is right at the end of the story. It's actually literally the end of the account. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Lazarus has come out of the tomb. He's alive, but he's dressed as if he's dead because he was dead when they put the grave clothes, the linen strips on him. And Jesus gives instructions to take off the grave clothes so he could be free. The Bible talks a lot about clothes. It's, it's quite remarkable. Paul especially liked this analogy of clothes and the idea of the old clothes or the dead man's clothes. He says in uh, Ephesians 4 to take off the old clothes, take off the old self, and to put on the new self. The Bible talks about wearing or being clothed in righteousness, in holiness, to be clothed in Christ. It occurred to me that practically, sometimes I, I live as if I'm still wearing my old grave clothes. Jesus has brought me back to has given me spiritual life i was spiritually dead according to ephesians 2 but now through the the power of the holy spirit i've been made alive but i'm walking around in these grave clothes and no wonder it's weird i'm i'm saying i'm new but i'm wearing clothes that suggests i'm i'm dead um, or perhaps we try and put the new clothes on and they're not fitting properly because we haven't taken the old clothes off yet. You know, we're not willing to give up those things that were so important to us before or to stop doing those things that we know are, are harmful to us or to others. And, and so the new clothes of, of righteousness and holiness don't fit. 
because they, they don't work well with those old clothes. Um, I went uh, uh, paddle boarding yesterday and uh, I'll tell you, um, after paddle boarding uh, for about an hour in, in that uh, humidity, it was, uh, it, it didn't smell great. <laughs> it felt great because I got a good workout in, but uh, after a, a shower, I, I felt fresh and wouldn't it have been ridiculous for me to put those old sweaty clothes back on? But I think spiritually we do that so often. And Jesus invites us to just take those old clothes off, throw them out, get rid of them. Don't put them back in the closet even. Just get rid of them. Put on new clothes. And enjoy that feeling of a good shower and fresh new clothes. That's what we've been invited to do. And that's how we've been invited to live well, I hope you're encouraged this morning by a few of these things that uh, that that uh, God brought to me through this story. As I mentioned before, feel free to to highlight some of the things that God revealed to you from this story, and and um, you know, don't just share them with us on online, but feel free to talk to people about what God's been speaking to you about in your devotions and your prayer time and uh, the journey that he has you on and the conversation you're having with him. Hey, thanks for joining us and uh, hope you have a great week. Look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.